In 1948, a world-changing innovation emerged from Bell Telephone Laboratories. No, in addition to the transistor. Hello, I'm Claude Shannon, a mathematician here at the Bell Telephone Laboratories. Shannon's breakthrough was more fundamental than the hardware of the transistor. It was a mathematical theory. His 1948 paper, A Mathematical Theory of Communication, marked a turning point in history, replacing fragmented ideas about information and its transfer with a structured field, called information theory. Dubbed the Magna Carta of the information age, Shannon's paper used mathematics to quantify what had been a vague concept, information, and demonstrated that the dream of rapid, clear communications was possible. It laid the foundation for today's interconnected world of people and computers, paving the way for the digital information age. I truly believe Shannon is almost unique in that, in that sense, that we wouldn't be as far along today if he hadn't left and done what he did. He really deserves to be much better known, given that everything that we have nowadays in, in wireless technology, information technology, uh, and so on, really goes back to his 1948 work. A theory, a paper, a turning point. Claude Shannon's 1948 Mathematical Theory of Communication. The 19th century invention of the telegraph sparked a century of innovations. By 1915, you could call from New York to San Francisco, but there were issues. Born a year later, Shannon would go on to study at MIT, where he would revolutionize computing and even more impactfully begin his quest to redefine information, challenging the prevailing belief that static and interference were unavoidable. In a 1928 article for the Institute of Radio Engineers, renowned communication theorist John Carson had declared, Static, like the poor, will always be with us. As the 20th century progressed, channels became crowded and interference worsened. In television, this led to the FCC halting new station applications while telephone customers were asked to make fewer calls and contend with noisy lines. In the analog system, every bit of noise that got in early was amplified on and on and on. Yet despite their common struggle, radio, television, and telephone were seen as distinct entities with no thought of a universal solution. Bell Labs engineer J.R. Pierce, the man who named the transistor, described this time before Shannon's 1948 paper as a confused world, where communication engineers had a problem they hadn't formulated and no measurements for the commodity with which they dealt. As early as 1939, Claude Shannon recognized the commonality in all communications, writing, quote, Practically all systems of communication may be thrown into the following general form. Shannon had begun his theory because he found the unanswered questions in a 1928 paper fascinating. And the, the real thing for me was Hartman's paper, which I thought was a good paper, but I thought had not yet taken account of things like noise, dust uh, encoding, and stuff like that. In the decade between beginning his theory and its 1948 publication, World War II intervened. Claude Shannon joined Bell Labs in 1941, where his classified cryptography work aided his insights into information. He also met a visiting Alan Turing. Turing and I had an awful lot in common. I used to talk to him about my notions on information theory. Even the famously forward-thinking Alan Turing found Shannon's concept to treat all information the same radical, saying Shannon wants to feed cultural things to a computer. Quote, he wants to play music to it. When Shannon finally published his unifying communication ideas, J.R. Pierce said it came as a bomb. While some, like cybernetics founder Norbert Wiener, had understood fragments of Shannon's ideas, Shannon's creation of a fully coherent theory truly was a bombshell. In information theory, all of the essential pieces of it are due to Shannon. His mathematical theory of communication. They all came out in one piece, saying, here's this thing we've been doing forever, uh, and here's what it really is about. Here's the way to think about it mathematically. To achieve this turning point, Shannon stripped communication systems down to their basics and declared the meaning of the message, semantics, irrelevant. Simplifying the problem, Shannon recognized information as the reduction of uncertainty, something calculable using probability. From this, he built an objective, studyable science, complete with its own digitally-based unit, the bit, short for binary digit. A device with two stable positions can store one bit of information, the answer to a yes-no question, a zero, or a one. 
This fundamental unit unified all forms of information. Everything from Morse code to video could be measured and compared using bits. According to Hendrik Bode, the director of the Mathematical Research Group at Bell Labs, Until Shannon came along with his philosophic definition of the unit of information, it was awfully hard to get a grip on information and noise. Using bits, Shannon could express the smallest size to which a message could be compressed. It's Shannon entropy, symbol H. If you want to compress a file and you know how much entropy there is, you know you cannot do better. The paper then went further, proving the existence of error-correcting codes that would enable rapid, virtually error-free transmission of digital information, achieving what had been thought impossible, the vanquishment of noise. If you encode a message in just the right way, it will work against the noise and distortion and so on, which you might have in that channel. Finally, in an inspiring reveal of possibilities, the paper presents a formula for the maximum possible bits per second transmission rate. Symbol C for capacity, the Shannon limit. One of the basic things about going after fundamental limits on communication, going back to Shannon, you know what the ultimate limit is. Then you look at what we know how to do, and if there's a substantial gap, you say, well, we should look to find out how to bridge that. Starting in 1948, the goal of the Shannon limit inspired decades of worldwide research. Shannon had predicted that you could invent communication systems that achieve this marvelous capacity. We looked at communication codes, how well they compared with capacity form. The results were rather surprisingly bad. If information theory would not have been there, we would never have been talking about capacity achieving codes. Turbo codes, discovered by French scientists in the 1990s, were the first to approach the Shannon limit. These codes are in 5G today. However, in 1948, the paper faced skepticism. Its novelty and blend of engineering and mathematics led mathematician Joseph Dube to critique it as more suggestive than mathematical. Yet Warren Weaver, the director of science at the Rockefeller Center, saw the paper's significance, added an introduction, and had it republished as THE mathematical theory of communication. As the paper became popular, Shannon expressed concern about a lack of rigorous study and wrote an article called The Bandwagon, urging research over exposition. The quality research following this call solidified the paper's role as a turning point in history. With over 150,000 citations, Shannon's paper is the fourth most cited paper on Google Scholar. IBM scientist Horst Feistel said, Shannon's work opened up almost unlimited possibilities to invent, design, and research. Research at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, which had obtained early copies of Shannon's work, led to error-correcting codes for space missions. And I started talking in the uh, late 50s at JPL about digital communications. This was considered a contradiction in terms. The systems we started designing for uh, deep space communication were very much influenced by this whole new concept by Shannon. Shannon's theory revealed the benefit of encoding information, but technology costs hindered its adoption. Because of this, efficient error correction codes from the 1960s weren't implemented until the 90s, and U.S. television didn't go digital until 2009. But by the time Claude Shannon died in 2001, the revolutionary ideas of his 1948 paper had laid the groundwork for the digital age, sparking the development of the internet, cell phones, and computer networks, and significantly enhancing our capacity to store, communicate, and process information. Shannon's ideas changed the world so profoundly that we now depend on fast, reliable access to information. However, as the digital world Shannon enabled spread unevenly across society, it led to a significant digital divide, marginalizing those with limited tech access and exacerbating inequalities. If you're adding another hour travel time, two hours trying to get homework done with the Wi-Fi at the library, it's hard. In 2011, the United Nations released a report positioning internet access as a fundamental human right. Claude Shannon's theories in just 63 years had changed our concept of human needs. For better or for worse, these 79 pages in the Bell System Technical Journal kicked off the digital revolution, transitioning us from analog to digital and enabling today's ubiquitous integration of technology. As internet founder Vint Cerf said, Shannon laid the foundations of our digitized universe. Claude Shannon, his impact is bigger than 
all of the household names. Every act of storing, processing, or transmitting digital information attests to Shannon's paper as a historic turning point. Without this paper, 